Good evening, everyone. Hey. Welcome to Living Hope. Glad that you're here this, this evening for our worship uh, Monday, Thursday service, or Holy Thursday, the day when Jesus celebrated the Lord's Supper for the first time with his disciples in the upper room. It is the night that Jesus would be betrayed. It is the night before Jesus would die. So we, we talk today especially about the Lord's Supper, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Those of you who are joining us online, you can find the service uh, posted for you in the live feed. Begin our service then uh, with the hymn. It kind of reminds us of what we are doing in the Lord's Supper. Uh, Jesus is taking away our sins. We are giving our sins to Jesus, so to speak. So let's stand and join together in the hymn, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Blessings on your service. worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Bow with me in prayer. Lord, I am not worthy to be a guest at your table, but you are the friend of sinners, and you will not cast me out. This bread is your body, which bore my sins upon the tree. This wine is your blood which purifies me from all guilt. At your invitation, I come. Receive me, my Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. 
First lesson for today is recorded in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 7th verse. This is what is written. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it for you? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and divide it among you, for I, will tell, I tell you, I will not drink it again, not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the covenant, new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Second lesson is also going to be the basis of our sermon for today. The Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthian church about some of the struggles that they were having when it came to the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, this is what is written. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the, the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join in the hymn, Jesus, your blood and righteousness. Let's stand and sing. Thank you. 
Please be seated. My brothers, my sisters, bow our heads and say a prayer. Lord, as we gather, we pray for your blessing on us. Help us, Lord, to understand your word and to understand what a great blessing your body, your blood is, Lord Jesus. Bless us as we meditate and bless us through the Lord's Supper tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So, sometimes it's hard to concentrate, right? Yeah, you want to focus, you want to concentrate, but there's so many things going running through your head and so many things running through your life that sometimes it's hard to focus and to concentrate. This thing that we do here is amazing. Uh, when you stop and you think about what's taking place, the Almighty God is stepping down from his throne and through the act of eating bread and drinking wine, he is joining himself to you and me, making us one with him and making us one with one another. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? And with that comes the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of our faith and the peace and the hope that we have with the Almighty God. All of that comes with it. The promise of eternal life and hope for a better tomorrow, hope for a better today. And it's such an amazing thing that we do it twice a month here at Living Hope. Twice a month we do it. Because it's that big of a deal. But as big of a deal as it is, there's a part of it, though, that needs to be dealt with in all seriousness. This is not just an act, emotion, going through the motion sort of thing. This is a connection with the Almighty God. And when it is done without the seriousness that is required, it causes problems. <coughs> And so we're going to talk a little bit today and remind ourselves why it is that we do this week after week. And why once a year we take a whole service and we talk about the Lord's Supper. It is to remember Him. We've been talking about to remember. Today it is to remember Him. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church and they were having all kinds of problems with the Lord's Supper. They understood that the Lord's Supper was a celebration. It is, right? We call, we say, we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. So there is a joy. There is a, a celebration of God's love and God's forgiveness. So it is right to expect that there is going to be some joy and some celebration when it comes to Jesus' body and blood because it is the forgiveness of sins. It is the salvation of our souls. It is an expression of God's love. It is unity with Him. And so we celebrate, and they understood that. And so they wanted to celebrate the unity that they had with each other and the unity and the forgiveness of sins that they had from God. And so they created this thing, we call them love feasts or agape feasts. And it was a fellowship meal is what it was. And so with the Lord's Supper, they had this big fellowship meal and everyone would bring stuff and they'd celebrate and they'd eat their food and they'd have this celebration along with the Lord's Supper unity that they had with each other, celebration of the forgiveness of sins, but it started to cause problems. The agape feast, agape grace, God's grace, God's love, right? The agape feast started to be a competition. Some people were wealthy and could bring, and others were not so wealthy and couldn't bring. Some people came and they started to pig out. There was all this noise and this confusion, and everyone forgot what was really supposed to be happening. And so Paul writes some words to them and reminds them what this is all about, and reminds them that this is not just for you to have a big party. This is not for you to show off how much money you have so you can bring the biggest dish. This is for you 
to remember him. I'm going to read a couple of verses to you, uh, and, and then I'm going to talk about them. And, and kids, the second verse, the second part I'm going to talk to you guys about. All right? It's an important thing for you to understand, because you don't get to go up for communion, right, right Chloe? Someday. Someday soon. But what do you do until then? What does communion say to you? All right, so, so listen up. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. In the same way, after supper, Paul is quoting here, he, that's Jesus, took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's talk about that. You are to do this in remembrance of me. It's hard to stay focused. You got people standing up and going in line and whose turn is it next and is pastor going to point at me and who are we going to go with and who's going to go? Who didn't go? I wonder why they didn't go. I don't know if I want to stand up in in front of everyone. I'm not sure that my hair is right. I... Maybe the distraction is more serious. You had a rough week. And the noise in your head is from all of the things that went wrong and didn't go so well. It's okay to think about your sins when you go to the Lord's Supper, but not to fixate on them. It is true that this has to do with the forgiveness of sins, and part of preparing ourselves to receive Christ's body and blood is to walk through the fact that I am a sinner. But to become fixated on them and to be obsessed with the fact that I have fallen short this last week and remember all of my sins, that's not what, Paul, that's not what Jesus said or what Paul writes, is it? Do this, don't do this in remembrance of your sins, but do this in remembrance of Him. And sometimes the noise in our brain and the confusion in our head, just like the agape feasts in the Corinthians, gets in the way, and instead of focusing on what we're supposed to focus on, I don't know if I should be going. I don't know if I'm worthy. pastor tells me I should, but I really don't feel it. Maybe the noise in our head is with a brother or sister. Somebody that we have something with. Some sort of a issue. And we see them going and we wonder why they're going and should they be going. We're not remembering then why it is that we are here and what this is all about. When we come up here to receive Christ's body and blood, Paul writes, Jesus tells us that we are here not to remember all the rest of that stuff that's going on, but what we are to remember is Jesus. What is it about Jesus that we're supposed to remember? I, probably everything about him, but maybe there's certain things that are more important than others. And I kind of summarize them into two groups. One is that we're supposed to remember what Jesus gave up. I think that's right. What did he give up? What was the sacrifice that he made? It is Jesus' body and his blood, and so the purpose there is to point us to the cross of Christ, the sacrifice that he made. It's a preaching of the law, a remembrance of what the consequence of our sins is and what Jesus gave up for it. And so maybe just stop for a moment and look at him on the cross. You see him? What's he look like? Probably beat up a little bit. Got some blood running down in funny places. Probably looks pretty worn out. Barely making it. He's got wounds in his hands, nails in his feet, and his head is bowed in utter exhaustion. What did he give up? He 
you strip naked, or almost so, humiliated, hung as a criminal on a cross, executed. What did he give up? You see it? His friends turning and walking away, some of them even running away. You see it? God the Father himself turning his back on him and forsaking him. What did he give up? Remember it. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Son of the Almighty God. He is the Lord of life who sat on a throne and governed the world. And he gave it all up because of your sins and mine. And as we approach the table to receive Christ's body and blood, we do this in remembrance of him. And one of the things I think it is good for us to remember is the sacrifice, the willing sacrifice that Christ made for you. Amen? But I don't think that's it. I think the other thing that we need to remember when we go up there is why he did it. Not only what he gave up, but what he gives to you and me. Why did he do it? Did he do it because the father was making him? Or because he was afraid that his dad was going to give him that, you know, that dad's look of disapproval and shame? Is that why? Did he go because he didn't have a choice? He went because he loved me. We come to the Lord's table not only to remember what Jesus gave up, but also to remember what he gives to us. And one of the things he gives to us is his great love. His great love that guarantees to you and I forgiveness of sins, all of our sins, all of our sins. A home in heaven, peace with the Almighty God, eternal life with him, hope for tomorrow. Remember what he gave up. There's the serious side of the Lord's Supper. But remember what he gives to you. There's the celebration side of the whole thing. The joy and the happiness and the forgiveness of sins and the unity that we have with the Almighty God. We come up here and we remember not only the sacrifice that Christ made, but also the love that he shows to us and the blessings that are ours through Jesus Christ. So clear our heads. Get rid of all the noise whatever confusion there may be. Stop before it's your turn. Take a moment and clear so that you can remember and focus on what you're supposed to focus on. Amen? Amen. And while you're doing it, something else happens. I'm going to read the verse again. This is for you kids. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as I am going up here and I am eating the body and blood and drinking the blood of Christ and I'm up here doing this, I'm doing something else. Something extra is happening, external is happening while I am remembering what Jesus gave, what remembering what Jesus gives to me. Another thing is taking place. What is it? A proclaiming. Nobody says anything. I'm the only one who's talking. So how are you proclaiming anything? I've never heard any of you turn around and stand up and shout something as you, as you finish the Lord's Supper. So how are you proclaiming anything? And what in the world are you proclaiming? And who's listening? Well, think about it. When you go up here and you receive Christ's body and blood, what are you saying? Not just I believe. But I am confessing that I am a sinner who is in need of forgiveness. I'm confessing that I don't have my whole life worked out as much as I like to pretend, that I have everything put together and everything is just so. I am coming to the Lord's table because I am in need. And I am in need of God. And you are saying, I believe that Jesus forgives me and loves me, that I have an eternity and a hope with him. 
Every time we go up, there is a physical proclamation to everyone who sees us do it. All of our brothers and sisters here, and especially, I think, the person that it is, affects the most is our children. Moms and dads, we don't like to admit when we make a mistake, right? Especially to our children, right? And sometimes as parents, we always think we're right and we're not always right. And not just as parents, but even as Christians, we all have this part of us that we don't recognize the sins and the mistakes that we make. We think we know all of them, but we don't. And sometimes we hurt people and we say things and we do things and we don't even realize and recognize that we did it. But every time that we come up here, we are declaring to one another, to our God and to our children, we are proclaiming, I am a sinner who does not have it all worked out. I am a sinner who needs Christ Jesus. I don't always do it right. I'm sorry that I don't always do it right. And I need Jesus. So kids, when you see your mom and dad going up here to receive Christ's body and blood, know that that's what they are proclaiming to you. That even though mommy and daddy always think they know and think they have it right, they don't. And the very act of coming to the Lord's Supper is proclaiming that to the world. So, we sing our songs, we have our motion, people standing up, and I point at people, and they stand, and songs are going on, and people are walking. But don't let any of that distract you from what we're supposed to be doing. You have a busy week where there was failures, and there was mistakes, and there's things you regret, and things you wish you could go back and change. Don't let any of that keep you from remembering what you're supposed to remember. There are people in here who are sinners who have done things wrong and maybe even know about them. But clear your head of all of that. Because we are here to do two things. Remember him. Remember what he gave up. Remember what he gives. And we are to proclaim Proclaim to the world that we are sinners who are saved by Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's continue with our, I think there's another song here. Let's continue by singing the song, Jesus, name above all names. Let's stand and sing. our God, to whom all hearts are open, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. 
and in your faithfulness come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. Jesus says to his people, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? Yes, I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. We pray. O Lord, my God, I call to you for your love, and you answered me. I thank you for the love you have shown me in Jesus Christ, my Savior. Through him, you have rescued me from the guilt of my sin and given me the peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are at peace. The Lord is with you. Amen. Amen. We join together in the hymn, Nothing But the Book. <clears throat> Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always Come to receive Christ's body and blood, remembering him, proclaiming his death. All things are now ready.
We'll join in as many verses as we need from the hymn. Want to start with the pianist family? You guys want to come? Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus, given into death for all of your sins. And drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith till life everlasting. You are at peace with God. Your sins are forgiven. Take neat. This is the true body of our Lord Jesus.
as surely as you tasted the wine, as surely as you felt the bread in your mouth, as surely as you smelled it as you brought it up to your mouth, so surely are you forgiven in Christ Jesus. Absolutely, 100% promise of God, you are forgiven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We join together. Oh no, we don't. We join together in a prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for nourishing me in this sacrament with your body and blood. You have given me forgiveness, life, and salvation. Let me always remain in you as a branch remains in the vine. Send me out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. In your name I pray. Amen. And one more lesson. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live at harmony with one another and serve the Lord with joy. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Amen. Take a moment to greet the people around you. A couple of announcements, and then we'll sing our last song. Please be seated for a moment. Um, one of the most difficult things when taking the Lord's Supper not to be distracted by is all of the different things that you have to do in order to take communion during COVID, right? How many times haven't I seen someone try and put the wafer through their mask? Wait, where do I put the cup? But that's really what this is about, is to focus again on him. And too often we allow our own sins and our own messes and the messes of the world around us to interfere with one of the greatest blessings that God has given to us, the ability to be united with the Almighty God, to become one with him. That's why it's called communion. Right? Uh, Good Friday service tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Um, love to have you come, invite your friends, your neighbors, everyone is welcome to come. Easter, same thing, service at 9 o'clock, everyone is welcome to attend. 
We will have a sort of Easter brunch fellowship thing afterwards. People are welcome to take their food and go home. There will be some tables set up to stand next to to put your stuff on. We're not going to have the traditional sit-down thing because if we were to do that, there's a whole other set of regulations that we would have to follow. So this we can do something without it being setting up a restaurant type thing. So, uh, so love to have you join us. Bring your family, bring your friends. Uh, service 9 o'clock, fellowship meal at 1030. Love to have you guys come. If you want to help out, there will, I don't know if there's, there's going to be a lot of prep. Maybe, Carol, you would know. 10, 10 o'clock on Saturday, I think there's just putting together the meals and setting up some tables. So, right. Any other announcements? Uh, steel pan on Sunday. Choir on Sunday. So it promises to be an exciting service. Right? All right, let's close with our last song. Thank you all very much for coming, and we'll sing Go to Dark Descent.